All right, today preaching is from uh, Amos 5.24. But let justice roll down like uh, waters and uh, righteousness like uh, an ever-flowing stream. Uh, Very short verse. It is a main message of uh, the topic of uh, Amos, the book of Amos. Uh, Book of Amos is uh, talking about, when you read it, uh, pretty much talking about justice, especially, uh, you know, justice and righteousness. In Hebrew, mishpat u chedaka. This is a very important word. When you see the structure of uh, the Book of uh, uh, Amos, it, it also talking about whole passages, you know, uh, God is uh, uh, just a, uh, uh, especially uh, criticizing the people of God and then they might uh, live according to the word of God you know so uh, he he was a prophet really straight talking and then only two books are there uh, those who preach it to the northern kingdom uh, Hosea and uh, Amos Hosea emphasized the, the love of God very you know kindly thing he's talking about uh, gentle and generous thing God's uh, uh, you know character he talked about but opposite way and uh, the prophet of Amos uh, totally different emphasized a different way uh, he just emphasized uh, justice and righteousness if you don't live according to the word of God you will be punished and then just uh, he just give, uh, gave them you know to the people of Israel and especially judgment of God. This is uh, the message of uh, Amos, you know, and uh, you you just uh, sh- supposed to know that. So in those time of Amos, uh, when he was uh, preaching, when you look at the first one and two, is a uh, background, uh, historical background. When you look at that, verse one, the old word of God, uh, the word of the words of Amos, who was among the shepherds of uh, Tekoa which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, uh, the son of uh, Joash, the king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Many commentators, they talking about it was, uh, uh, you know, 760 uh, before Christ, 760. It was at that time, 760 is almost uh, you know, the prophet of uh, uh, Jonah was walking there. So when you read the Jonah, the book of Jonah, uh, Jonah went to uh, Nineveh, uh, 766, almost, you know, pretty close time, 766. So, you know, it is from almost uh, 2,707, you know, 70 years ago, it happened. So this is the background of Amos. So as a people of God, it was uh, before the, you know, before the, the fall of the Israel, Israel, as you know, 721 BC, they, the the country of Israel, ever corrupted, you know, demolished and uh, destroyed uh, by Assyria. So it was before that time. Why the people of Israel uh, just become, you know, uh, destroyed? Because of this passage. When you look at, when you read it, you will uh, recognize. It is talking about clearly. Anyone they claim to be, uh, you know, people of God, they don't just uh, live according to as people of God. They will be punished. So, when you read it again, uh, I will read it for chapter five, verse fourteen. F- chapter five, verse fourteen: Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord the God of hosts will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, this says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, in all the squares, you know, talking about uh, what is that? Really, as your people of God, if you don't leave, you know, what uh, according to the Bible, and you will be punished. So, message is pretty uh, sane you know it emphasizing again and again when you read this this passage it's talking about uh, this is a passage when you look at also the book uh, contents and if you look at that and uh, chapter one through you know chapter one through two is uh, talking about six other nations 
Got it punish Syria, Gaza, Tyre, Edom, Amon, Moab. So many countries will be punished because of, you know, because of they have sinned against God. So if you look at verse one, chapter one, verse three, thus says the Lord, chapter one, verse three, for three transgression of Damascus. I'm talking about, you know, you made this kind of thing. That's why you will be punished. And then talking about other country continuously. So six other country will be punished because they have sinned against God. So anyone who are sinning against God, even though you claim to be your people of God, you will be punished. We are just uh, pretending to be pastors or teachers and uh, also, you know, whatever you, your position right now, you will be punished if you don't live according to the word of God. This is a teaching of the Bible. You know, when you read the book of Amos, we will realize how important as people of God. So many people, they are thinking, all right, I am received, you know, salvation. I am born again Christian. I, I am really, uh, you know, have a heritage of a justification by faith. I believe that Jesus Christ. So I am saved. They are so proud to be, you know, born again Christian. That's important. But however, we should go back to Old Testament. Old the Testament is so much emphasizing the people of God. Even though you claim to be people of God, you always, we always faithful to the word of God. This is the emphasis of the, the book of Amos. All right, you just claim to be people of God or people of Israel, people of Judah. All right, you are selected, you are chosen people. But however, how are your lives? How you really, you really living according to the Bible, you know? God is just, uh, you know, uh, just uh, uh, telling them about it. So seek justice and righteousness, you know? This is the point. So five uh, prophets, the message is uh, chapter three and six. Uh, among them, and then today passage is coming up, and the five uh, visions uh, follow chapter seven to nine. And the conclusion, and there, and 9-11 uh, is the conclusion of this book, Amos. And uh, God will restore, uh, you know, in the regardless of uh, what you are doing. 9-11, in that day I will raise up the boots, boots of David that is fallen, and repair its breaches, and raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old, you know. So in last times, so God will just restore all the, you know, the people of God. Even though we made a, we crooked, we are just a, a far away, a forsaken, and we are just a far away from the way of the Lord. But God will restore all relationship and our status, our, you know, situation. This is a promise. If you look at the contents, according to the judgmental message, God is going to punish them for their because of their sins you know so when you read the Old Testament you know so many people emphasizing according to the systematic theology all right we are justified by faith we believe the Christ we are okay they are only talking about again and again when they go to church you know that confidence is good but however they should teach the Bible don't only talking about reformation and the history of the church. History of the church is important, but more important thing is, you know, teaching of the Bible, you know. I see so many reformers history, they're talking about emphasizing so many reformers like Calvin, Luther, it's okay. But they have to remember they are also, you know, human. They are sinned against God, we have to remember. And so many reformers, you know, they are just admiring so many reformers. I'm not just resisting their uh, uh, opinion or I, I admire what they had done, you know, during the Reformation. I really respect it. But what I'm saying is uh, we should go back, go back to the Bible. But what the Bible teaching about it? You know, Reformers is not, uh, you know, people like, uh, you know, Paul, not uh, like uh, Jesus, not uh, like uh, Moses in the Bible, you know, Reformers. Just in history. They're like us. We can learn from what they have done in history, but we have to 
only take a good thing from them. So many historical theologians, they emphasize reformation, the history, reformers emphasizing so much, so much admiring Luther, Calvin as like almost the position of Jesus Christ. This is a really, you know, admiring, you know, this is a really wrong thing we are doing right now. We just uh, take a uh, consider the Bible itself. Don't talk about the people, you know. Even though we are respecting the, you know, the Abraham, patriarch Abraham, he was good. Good father, like Moses. However, we should not just admire Moses, uh, also, you know, Abraham. We respect because of what he has, uh, we had, he had lived according to his uh, faith, you know. This, uh, that is important. So I think uh, the book of Amos is uh, so challenging in our time. Why? Why is that? Because uh, this book is uh, really talking about the people of Israel. You should come back. You know, chapter 30, verse 1. Hear this word the Lord has spoken against you, all people of Israel, against the whole family that I brought to you out of the land of Egypt. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you. For all your iniquities. Look at this. You know, you are special. You are just to deliver the people. You are saved the people. I am brought out of the land of Egypt. That means you are saved the people. We are born again Christian. All right, we okay. We go, we go going to church. We are attending, you know, worship. It's okay. We are just uh, justified by faith. We are uh, descendant of, uh, you know, reformers. We are okay. You are not okay. I'm sorry about that. What the Bible is talking about. See that. You have I known of all the families of the earth. We are special. We are chosen. You know. But however. I will punish you for all your iniquities. What does it mean? Because even though. No matter what. You are people of God. If you are sinning against me. You are taking everything for yourself. Institute is not yours. School is not yours. Everything is for God. Church is not yours. Even though everything is, you know, looking like a given to me, it's not mine. We have to dedicate our lives. We have to serve for the kingdom of God. Your time, your energy, your talent, your money. We are supposed to serve for the kingdom of the Lord, you know. So many people taking them for personal uses, taking money from me, taking, you know, also fame from me. Everything is coming from God. Everything is, a, you know, we have to use it for the God's glory. They're claiming the people of God and they're using everything for himself and for his own. This is a sin. Look at this. I will punish you. This is a message of Amos. I will punish you. For you, you are iniquities, you are sins. God will punish all of us if we, even though we are saved Christian, we are born again Christian, we claim to be, you know, faithful Christian. However, continually we are sinning against God. We have to remember, you are sin, you are iniquities. I will punish you because of that. So many people, they don't think about this. They claim to, oh, I'm pastor, I'm okay. I'm chairman of a school. You're not okay. You're not okay. God will punish you. This is a Bible. Oh, I'm, I'm head of a church. I'm also, you know, senior pastor of a big church. Yeah, no man can punish you. But God will punish you. You should be careful. When you are sinning against the God, God is watching you. We have to... Look ourselves. We should live in front of, in the eyes of the Lord. Sincerely. Not telling to the people, you cannot deceive. You can deceive the people of God. You cannot deceive the eyes of the Lord. How about you? How are you living every day? Are you really living in the eyes of the Lord or just, uh, you know, in the eyes of the people? I really like the message of Amos. You know, he's a really sincere, uh, I think, uh, servant of God. Look, his message is powerful. 
You know, that country it just exists a couple of days, a couple of years. His message was, I told you already, 760 BC. But remember, after 40 years later, the land of Israel just, uh, you know, destroyed by Assyria because they failed. They didn't live according to the word of God. Because they didn't keep, they just disregarded the teaching of the Bible. Our nation, Korea, even the grooming and just the blooming and just the flourish and just, you know, our church is going out like that. It blessed the condition. But, but uh, however, we don't just keep the, the word of God. We cannot tell the future of our Korean church or any kind of country in the future. We'll not, uh, we, we cannot really, uh, you know, talking about what, what really uh, can happen. This is uh, really important, you know. So don't just uh, satisfy yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Don't have a complacency. Hmm? Sometimes uh, we are falling into the mannerism. Oh, I'm done. I'm doing it. Uh, I used to do, do it. I do every day. You know? We should always uh, just uh, fear the presence, fear the word of God. The prophetic books are talking about the people will be punished for what they have done. This is the message of prophetic books. Hosea through you know, all the books, 12 books, minor prophetic books, and uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, you know, Ezekiel, Daniel, like that. All the, our responsibility, because we are covenant people, and uh, we always uh, should uh, faithful to, to the people of God. Assurance of faith is okay, but you, if you are just falling into complacence, sense of entitlement, you know, I'm so special, I'm, I'm different with the people, I'm, I'm just the elite. You know, I am just uh, in high position. Think about, you know, mid, uh, uh, you know, uh, history when you look at that and uh, Catholic and when you are in the Reformation period, when you remember 16th century, think about it. Because they are so, uh, for, you know, fell into similar, I think, uh, uh, elitism, you know, elitism means really we are okay. We are just uh, uh, like priest, we are special, a uh, pope, and then they are so special. They are just above the authority at the time, political authority, as we know, the church history and uh, uh, history, uh, just a uh, uh, general history, if you think about it. The people of God always may think that they are special and selected to be special people of God. So they treat themselves as different people, so special compared to other ethnics. In recent, in recent we are having the similar attitude and similar, uh, you know, uh, just the people's uh, behavior. We may think that we are special. That's right. Different with the doctrines of systematic theology. I, I already indicated justification by faith. Yishin Chengi, and we received the grace and sa uh, saved, so we are okay. You know, this is really uh, just a deceiving. It. And that doctrine is right. But, you know, focus should be our relationship with God. God is not uh, just uh, talking about, Bible is not just uh, talking about our salvation. Bible is talking about how, sh how we should live as a people of God. This is the point. Read the Bible. Don't just read the theological books. So many people, they are just studying and reading theological books and they don't read the Bible, you know. And then just emphasizing doctrine only. Doctrine is, uh, you know, after when when read the Bible, afterwards, you know, when he just uh, fighting with the uh, heretics, heretic doctrine like that, we need that. But however, read the Bible, bow down the word of God before the word of God. Amos chapter 4, 1 is talking about, hear this word, you cows of Bashan, you who are on the mountains of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say, say to your husband, bring that we may drink. The Lord God has sworn by holiness that, behold, the days are coming upon you, when you are, shall take you away. With the hooks, even the last of you, you with the uh, fish hooks, 
and you shall go out through the breaches, each one straight ahead, and you shall be casted, cast out into harm, declared the Lord, you know. So what does it mean, really? You know, they are just a sinning, pretending to have a faith, but they are sinning against God. Especially, uh, chapter 4:4 4, 4 is a, a serious. Come to Bethel and transgress to Gilgal, and multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. This is a serious saying. When you look at it, this is a, uh, incredible, unbelievable, because they come to Bethel. Bethel is what, what, uh, what kind of place is that? Bethel is the, you know, worship place that they are. They go to Bethel, they worship to God in Israel. Where is the Gilgal? Same thing. But God is saying that you come to church and then they sinning against me. What does it mean? So many people, they are sinning against the God, you know. They come to church to God. They are making sin against God. This is the Bible saying. So many people, they are coming to church and pretending to be Christian and coming to offer the offerings and tithe. You are sinning against me. God is telling them. How serious this sin, you know. Verse 5, offer sacrifice thanksgiving of that which is a living and proclaim free will of offerings. Publish them for so you, you love to do. The o people of Israel declares the Lord God, you know. So many, you know, it's a serious situation. In the time of Amos, they have a worship, they have any, everything they're supposed to uh, out, you know, officially, but inner fact is uh, not real. Their lives not there. So many uh, seminaries, they will worship, you know, uh, in a class after class, uh, once or twice, uh, three, uh, three times a week like that. They should not be sinning against God, you know. We have worship one week every or Friday and Wednesday, whatever we have. So many churches are having worship ceremony. This kind of thing should not be the sinning against God. If we don't, we ourselves are not reaping as the people of God. You know, totally crooked and totally far away from the living of the God and as people of God. Even though we come to worship and they're just deceiving it, deceiving ourselves, pretending to be just sitting down and worshiping. Look at the Bible, what the Bible teaches about. Romans 12, 1, living sacrifices. You know, we live as a sacrifices, real sacrifice. We should offer our bodies. This is a teaching of the Bible. So many people only, you know, ritually, you know, only just a ritual or liturgy, in a liturgy, you know, just a worshiping outside, they're pretending to worship God. This is not enough. God is asking your heart, genuine heart, your, you know, inner heart, your just, a, you know, your just the inside God's are looking at. You know, so many people, they are not doing it. They are just giving the tithe, the gate, they are giving offering. But they are not living. They are not just offer their lives at all. They offer like a certain amount of money to God, but they don't offer their lives and they never just live according to the Bible. So many people. What are their, their belongings? Like institute, school, or whatever you have. We should just offer everything to God, you know? We should live according to Everything is uh, his belongings, you know, my life as well, my talents as well. You, everything is just uh, belonging to God. But how come only we pretending just come to worship and uh, 10 minutes or not like just one hour and two hours just uh, pretending to give, give to him or a certain amount of money only that's just uh, giving to God, you know? We just... Uh, uh, deceiving ourselves, oh, that is all I should do. Not at all, you know. God is not asking that. God is, a, a, you know, opposite way, pointing out that you are just uh, sinning against me. Come to Bethel. 
transgressed to kill God. This is a place that they worship. They have a ritual ceremony. They are worshiping, but they are sinning. God is pointing out. How come? This is serious. We are doing that. We have to realize. You know, point of the Bible right now. God is saying that their worship is making sin against Him. Literally, is self not enough to God. So many people pay attention to external feature. God is asking to His people the real life, our bodies, our, you know, whole, you know, as a whole. The ritual ceremony is not enough. So, essence of our faith, what is there? What is the essence? Seek me and live. Seek me. What can he, you know, how can he uh, seek God, you know? But they are seeking only, they, uh, you do not seek Bethel, do not enter the Gilgal, you know, because uh, don't make a sin again. Don't come to worship. So the faking worship or just, uh, uh, I think, heretic or just a uh, Pharisee, uh, those kind of uh, uh, superficial uh, worship. Don't come to the worship. God is just, uh, you know, telling them. So we should ask uh, essence of our faith. What is that? 514, seek good and do not, not evil. I just read it before, that, you know. You should uh, seek good and, uh, good and uh, God. So that's why 524, let's go back to 524 again. Talking about uh, 524, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like uh, an ever flowing stream. What does it mean? When you claim that you believe uh, God, you believe God and uh, you should uh, believe uh, God is you know, justice and righteousness. You should know that. So when you seek good and when you seek God, it means really you should live according to to do justice and righteousness. Chedeka u mishpat in Hebrew. This is the uh, our life should be. If you are claimed to be Christian, you should live. You should to do. Uh, you know, justice and righteousness. What, what, are, what are those, uh, you know, concepts is there? If you look at the justice, means a mishpat has the meaning, decision, judgment, dispute, case, a legal claim, measure, and the law. So justice uh, is uh, like a measure, is uh, like a standard. So you should uh, standard, seek the standard. What is the standard? In the Bible, uh, it's written. We should uh, seek always justice, justice according to the will of God. Bible is clearly talking about the main, uh, main character of God is uh, justice and uh, righteousness. God is uh, just always. You know, he has a character of justice. He is a measure. He is a standard. You know, he is the law. He has given to us the law of God. So we always uh, follow. We always uh, will be judged according to his uh, rule, you know, his uh, teaching. This is a mishpat, the shapat. Shapat is like a uh, judge. He's going to. So always you should remind, we will be judged in the eyes of the Lord. Those kind of uh, perspective you should have, justice. So always we should be just in his uh, perspective, in his eyes, in, the, in his view. Always stand up how, how he will look at me in his uh, thinking. Even though you are right, it seems like you are right in your perspective. That is not right. That's your subjective, uh, you know, subjective uh, uh, opinion. Many people thinking very subjective way. Oh, I'm okay, I'm right. That's his uh, thinking. We should always, in the eyes of the Lord, in his perspective, what, how does God will look at me like in this situation? How God will just uh, you know, evaluate in this uh, certain doing? You know, like always we should, uh, that's why we are reading the Bible. That's why we just uh, try to you know, uh, focus on the, our you know, view every day. How do, do we do that? Because we try to really focus on the teaching of the Bible, justice. So you always uh, should uh, focus on uh, the measure and the standard of the Bible. 
This is your justice. What, what is the righteousness? Chedeka, Chedaka. Chedeka, Chedaka is like a, a righteous equity, right, just accuracy, right thing, and uh, what is the right uh, communal loyalty conduct. Yeah, this is a very important concept as well. Communal loyalty conduct. What does it mean, communal? It's, uh, you know, two part, you know. God is very uh, loyal to us. God is doing right. So we are responsible for Him. We should do right because we are people of Him. This kind of a thing, communal loyalty. So we should be faithful to God because God has God always faithful to us and very. Uh, he has given us a uh, loyalty to us. That means always He has given blessing and always faithful to us. So we should react. You know, you should show in your doing, in your lives. This is uh, our righteousness. Chedaka, I already indicated in uh, Israel, when you go to uh, Sabbath, you know, Friday night is uh, like a starting of the Sabbath, and Saturday is a Sabbath. And then when you go to a shopping center, and uh, they just uh, taking out with their, uh, you know, uh, wrapping up and the leftover, yeah. you know, leftover, they just taking out. And anyone who is poor, they can take it as a free of charge, you know. So chedaka, like a contribution or donation, you know. Uh, so those kind of things, chedaka. Chedaka is a, like a, a donation, you know, like a righteous thing. When you just uh, give your offering to other people, that's chedaka in uh, modern world they're using. So chedaka is like, uh, as a Christian, we should live, you know. Not only talking, not only on the doctrine, not only our just the uh, affirmation of uh, our faith, or oh, we are just a uh, born again Christian. So not just uh, like a uh, doctrine, we should uh, live as a righteous behavior, act. That is a chedaka. So what does it mean? Mishpat u chedaka. Justice and righteousness. You always uh, have a uh, have the point of God's point, a point of view, God's perspective, and also try to live according to His, you know, in His words. So, when you read the Old Testament, not just that we are not satisfied, or uh, when you have only uh, doctrine, knowing doctrine is not enough. I'm not saying just uh, you don't need to know doctrine. Doctrine is very important to understand our situation and our status but however we should go further don't just uh, talking about so much uh, on the reformers or just uh, you know uh, always ancestors we should go beyond to the bible bible's teaching amos is so you know emphasizing it even though you are saying you are people of god but how you really living according uh, to the Bible, you know, this is important. How are you living in your real lives? So we are deceiving, we shouldn't deceive ourselves. If uh, we keep sinning, we are people of God, even though the uh, Bible is clearly talking about there. Yeah? And especially when you read the first uh, John is talking about 1.6. One, six, one, six. If you say we have a fellowship with Him, while we walk in darkness, you know, we lie and do not practice the truth. Same thing. The New Testament is uh, witnessing to us the same thing. Many people, they are saying, oh, I'm Christian. I'm living. I'm walking with Christ. No, if you're just uh, sinning against God and living in darkness, that means that your saying is uh, not the truth. You know, so your behavior, your action, just to prove what you are, you know. So our, we should approve with our action, our lives, behavior. How do you act? Only taking money from, you know, taking money from him, and also only taking a fame from someone, uh, something. How do you live, you know? People know about it, and uh, only you don't know. <laughs> Most of the people, they know uh, what kind of life you are living. I know that. You know, and so many people, they're walking like a dogs, like a Caleb. Caleb is like a dog, you know. Calebim is like a dogs. But Caleb, Caleb is like a, in a Bible, 
is very faithful man like Joshua and Caleb. And he was good. He was faithful to God. That's why his name, he named Caleb. But in our days, so many Caleb to men, you know. Someone asked, oh, go and bite. That's a muro. And they go and bite and then sue and then bug him like that. Only they are listening to people saying, you know, these are like dogs, you know. Bible is talking about, also Paul is talking about so many dogs. Uh, so you just be careful, be aware of dogs in the, in the Bible is appearing. So what are you working for? Whom are you working for? Eh? Are you really working for God or working for yourself or working for, for someone? This is not right, you know. So, Bible is clearly is talking about 1 John 2, 4, 5. Whoever say, says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. Liar! You liars! So many people are liars! I don't want to be liars, you know. They are saying, I know him. I believe him. I'm Christian. They don't live. According to, they don't keep commandment. Bible is saying, you are liars! Are you liars? Yeah, hopefully not. You are not liars. You shouldn't be. Because uh, we, we, truth is uh, in us. We should keep, you know, his word. This is the Bible's teaching. So we should go back always. Other thing, if you look at the first, uh, you know, John is talking the uh, same way especially so we are deceiving uh, we should not deceive always we when he believe in God you should know that we are his people we should do it walk with him always you know so whatever school whatever you owns it's not yours it's the, it's belong it belongs to God my money my talents my health my family my church Looks like mine. You remember and Nebuchadnezzar, my, 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 my. It's my castle, my kingdom, my. And he just become, he become crazy, you know. Nebuchadnezzar. If you, you know, read uh, the book of uh, uh, Daniel talking about. So many people, it's mine, it's mine. You know, just to grow up. Have, have faith. Live as a Christian. Don't be liars. You know, not anymore. We should only, we can say that we should uh, live as the uh, people of God. Amos, the message is uh, powerful because he's uh, just uh, pointing out 524. Let the justice roll down w like waters and the righteousness like an uh, ever flowing stream. This kind of person, this kind of society, this kind of a nation. This kind of generation we should meet in our time. But however, how many people are really seeking, 5 and 14, seek good, really seek God, you know? This is a problem. So we should just live and teach according to teaching of the, the book of prophet Amos. So, and we will experience. So, Mishpat and don't forget, and seek to do and his uh, justice and righteousness. Amen.